Lacto-fermented troubleshooting, let's go for it. Okay, you probably heard this numerous times before and that is that fermenting vegetables is very easy to do. All you need is good quality salt and water, fresh vegetables and you simply cut, chop and punch it up, stuff it in a jar and leave it for a week, a couple of months. It all depends on who you are. Fermenting is almost foolproof. Sometimes a ferment may look different than the previous one. They don't always look the same. And for the new fermenter, this can be a very confusing experience. So that's ultimately why you are here. And this program is to build your confidence so that you can be sure about the quality and safety of your ferment. Some variations may look strange, but actually forms a part of the fermentation cycle and can be considered as normal. So we're going to divide it into three categories to make it easy. That's the green category, the orange category and the red flag category. The green category means that it is consumable, you can eat it, it's normally just a stage that you have to wait, it, wait out. And then the orange category is a category where if you leave the ferment just like that it might move over into the red flag category which means you can't consume it anymore so orange category is savable but if you don't do anything about it it's going to move into the red category and when it's there or the red flag category and when it's there you have to compost it so let's dig in the green category oh before i forget i have to put I can't put enough emphasis on this. If something looks, smells or tastes off, don't consume it. Don't. Compost it and rather try again. Always, 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 always trust your senses. Here's a quick overview of the green category before we go into detail. Foamy brine, cloudy brine, white sediment, mushy vegetables, faded vegetables, blue, green or purple garlic, uh, bubbling over, self-brined vegetables that's too dry that's all part of the green category brine this usually happens when you are using vegetables with a high sugar content like beets and carrots and it's just a part of the normal fermentation process so it will pass a cloudy brine this is when the cell walls are broken down very very quickly by the good bacteria and it causes that cloudiness because it's the cell walls that's actually flat floating around in the brine. Um, this also means that your brine is loaded with vitamin B's. Okay, there's one precaution though. Always make sure that you use a salt that's free from iodine and also anti-caking agents because that can also form a cloudy brine and iodine isn't good for the good microbes. White sediment, when a cloudy brine settles it can leave a white sediment at the bottom of the jar. This is also accompanied by yeast settling. Sometimes it's bent yeast that go and settle at the bottom of the jar. This is acceptable in small amounts, but if it's coupled with slime, then it's not a good thing. So then I'd rather suggest tossing the ferment or mushy vegetables. This is usually because of cam yeast. If you don't remove it, it can cause your veggies to become a bit mushy and also high temperatures. Fermenting in high temperatures can also cause this to happen. Okay, here's the solutions to it. Try to ferment at temperatures below 21 degrees Celsius. When culturing cucumbers, cut the stems because this can cause cucumbers to become soft. Add an organic black or green tea bag to the jar. The tannins keeps your vegetables nice and firm. Mushy vegetables can be used in soups or breedies. You can also add more salt next time or ferment it for a short, shorter period of time next time. Faded vegetables. During the fermentation process you can expect to lose some color. Overripe vegetables used for fermentation can also become a much lighter shade than it originally was. It's a normal part of the fermentation process. Okay, so there's no need to worry about that. Um, you will see that your pickles, your um, chilies, chilies tend to fade extremely.
a blue, green and pink garlic, there's a certain chemical and water soluble pigments in garlic that causes the color to change to pink, blue and green. This is a variable phenomenon and it happens more often when you use immature garlic. It can even happen that some of the cloves in the garlic changes and others don't. Sometimes the garlic have more blue pigment and become more visible after fermenting. Okay, and here is something that you have to watch out for. Iron, tin and aluminium, it leaches. Make sure that your utensils is iron, tin, aluminium free. Rather use plastic, wood or stainless steel. As long as the color is on the garlic itself, it's safe to eat. If there's any fuzziness going on, don't eat it then because then it is in the red flag category. When your ferment is bubbling over, it's a great sign because it means that the necessary microorganisms is actively working to make those probiotics. And that is what creates the, the whispers, the bubbles and the boil overs. These bacterial strains are most active during the first three days of fermentation. And after that, when the work is done, the bubbles and the brine, it actually settles. So then it's no need to really worry about massive spillovers like that. Okay, action to be taken with boil overs. I'd rather use bigger jar um, to allow for about 20% head space if you are fermenting vegetables that's high in sugar content like beets and carrots or even fruits then you can leave a 30 to 50 percent head space bigger head space equals less spoilage or less spillage and if you want to you can put a shallow bowl below the jar or underneath the jar to catch up any spillovers. When self brined veggies is too dry, then you can top it up with a 2% brine, that is one teaspoon of salt dissolved in one cup of water and just top it up because you want to cover your veggies and keep it covered under brine at all times. That keeps the mold and pathogenic bacteria at bay. Um, for next time, make sure that you use the freshest ingredients, the freshest vegetables, because the fresher it is, the higher the good bacteria count. Also, if you pick your vegetables, make sure that it's heavy for their size. That means that there's a lot of liquid in there that can form the brine, and it will make your job a lot easier to create a brine that will actually cover the ferment. So at any time when there's brine, when you see the brine is it's going below the vegetable line, add more brine. Try to buy your cabbage at farmer's markets because that means that it is fresher. The longer your fruit or vegetables stand, the less concentration of good bacteria it will contain or have. The fresher, the better in that instance as well. Okay, we're now moving over to the orange category. And this is a category where you should be watchful keeping a close eye on your ferment because if you don't pay attention it might go over into the red category or the red flag category which will make it un inedible we're looking at strong odor nothing's happening for three days my vegetables is too salty and a slimy brine let's see what that is all about strong odor Lacto-fermented vegetables has a clean, tangy, fresh smell to it. Um, sometimes it can become a bit pungent, but there's definitely a difference between pungent and rotten. So for some people it is difficult to distinguish between a pungent and a rotten smell. But here you have to look at the ferment as well. If you are in this category, you have to look at your ferment and really trust your senses look at it smell it and if it doesn't have any mold or slimy or mushiness accompanied with the very very strong odor then it's safe to taste it and if it tastes good then it is good to eat a pungent odor shouldn't be accompanied by mold slime and mushy vegetables because then 
it can head to a red flag ferment so action here you have to make sure that you've washed and rinsed your equipment properly the rinsing is very important just as important as the washing part so because you don't want the soapiness or any type of other chemical to spoil your ferment add more salt next time because salt actually slows down the fermentation process enough so that every stage can develop properly and every stage is necessary for those microorganisms the good ones to form and create a barrier against bad microbes so add more salt next time use only the freshest vegetables available don't take a chance and use overripe vegetables or vegetables that have become a little bit wrinkly because that means that the good bacteria that's supposed to inoculate and kickstart the ferment that's usually on the surface on the inside of the fruits and vegetables that means that those bacteria doesn't have enough um, units to protect the ferment and that allows for pathogenic bacteria to take hold and that's why it results in a bad ferment or creates mold or, or slime it's now three days and still nothing is happening to my ferment well sometimes you have to be patient especially in winter months and sometimes the first 36 hours of the ferment might be slower and then only start with the bubbling and fizzing action to take try warmer temperatures around 21 degrees celsius and in winter it m will take longer to ferment so then you can perhaps put your ferment in a cooler box and add a hot water bottle to it just to bring the temperature up a bit if you like or even in a cardboard box same concept um, you can also try to use a starter to kickstart the process my ferment has a white film on the surface what to do about that now the white film on the surface is known as cam yeast and generally it is harmless so you just take a spoon and scoop it off you have to do this because if you leave the cam yeast on top of your ferment this may attract mold and then mold can take hold of it so that's why it's in the orange category if it's not removed it might attract mold and it can also cause your vegetables to go mushy the most popular cause of cam yeast is oxygen so keep the oxygen out of your jar keep your ferment underneath the brine because that can also attract cam yeast only use fresh vegetables and try to ferment in lower temperatures temperatures below 22 degrees celsius my vegetables is too salty what to do let's see it sometimes happens that you make a mistake and your vegetables turn out too salty i've also tried out um, certain sea salts and it really doesn't work it's too salty for the ferment and it also attracts mold um, that was the only cases where I had mold developing on my ferment action there's two ways to solve a salty ferment and unfortunately both ways destroy the probiotic profile of your fermented vegetables the one is to dilute the brine so what you're going to do is you're going to pour off some of the brine and then then add more water that will definitely dilute the salt and the other way is to add the overly salty veggies to your casseroles breadies or soups even the veggies may not be as probiotic rich or contribute to probiotic profile as we would like it to but at least you're not messing or wasting anything and that's one of the important things to me slime is caused by slime producing microorganisms and this happens usually when the temperatures are too high 
or if too little salt is added and it also happens certain times of the year in certain regions or with certain fruits or vegetables vegetables that's added to the ferment especially those with very very high sugar content but luckily most of the time this is only part of the fermentation process and people have found if they wait it out then it actually resolves itself yes action steps that you can take to prevent it ferment at temperatures below 22 degrees celsius when you get slime in the brine it's not necessary to discard the batch wait it out because this is normally just a stage and will normalize when the stage is over and don't eat your fermented vegetables while in the slimy brine state rather wait it out till it's not slimy anymore and then you can trust your senses look smell and taste it doesn't smell good doesn't look good don't taste it so that's the three things that you can do to save or to minimize the chances of creating a slimy brine ferment let's move over to the red flag category this is the category where your ferment becomes inedible the first one we're looking at is my ferment turned pink if you are fermenting a green cabbage or any other ferment that doesn't contain radishes, purple or red cabbage or beetroot, then there's no reason for your ferment to turn pink. And also I found Himalayan sea salt, those four things. So if it's radish, pink radish, purple or red cabbage, and Himalayan sea salt and beetroot if it's one of those four that's added to your ferment and there's some pinkness or pink tinges visible it's nothing to worry about but if you are fermenting a green cabbage and you see a pink tinge to it then it's a bad sign it's that there's an imbalance and it is probably mold action to take add less salt next time and keep the veggies submerged under the brine it's best to keep the temperatures below 22 degrees Celsius and discard the veggies by co composting it. So don't eat it. Don't eat it if it's not supposed to. Mold is never a good sign. There is people that says that suggest that you can just scrape the mold off and eat the ferment below. But I'm not a fan of that idea because mold has roots and mold only develops from mold spores so before it's even visible it's already there and that's why I'm not a fan of just scraping the mold off of the ferment I rather suggest that you discard it by composting it this normally happens in higher temperatures and when your ferment isn't fully submerged under the brine it can happen when too much salt is added and also because of not cleaning your equipment properly and contaminating it okay when you've got a moldy ferment your veggies won't be crunchy and it won't have the flavor that you we are looking for and i think it's risky to attempt eating it so let your nose be your guide and approach with caution the best thing to do when you've got mold on your ferment is to toss it out and compost it and use high quality fresh vegetables always keep the vegetables submerged under the brine dissolve the salt in the water when making the brine or make sure it's well mixed into the vegetables do not use sea salt try to keep your ferment below 22 degrees celsius this can be actually 25 degrees and below not above Although you don't need to sterilize your equipment, aim to wash and rinse it well. Hot water rinse puts my mind at ease. I always wash and rinse and then rinse with piping hot water to sterilize it in such a way. What if I open my jar and there's creepy crawlies lurking at me? What should I do? 
your ferment is not supposed to move. Crawlies, creepy crawlies are the result of a jar that was left open long enough for a fly to lay eggs in the ferment. When the eggs hatch, you have maggots crawling around making everything move and that's yuck. Sandor Katz is known as a fermented food revivalist and he says that there's nothing wrong with scratching off the top layer, discarding it and eating that what is below. But that doesn't really sit well with me because I am kind of a bit squeamish so I would, wouldn't do that. Um, yes, the maggots only occupy the top part of the ferment and the bottom part would be fine but I don't want to take that chance. I don't, just don't. It's not nice. So I discard it completely. Close your jaw completely to keep the air out and to keep the insects out because they like the smell of fermented foods. There's a lot of food there for their babies to grow. The last question that we're going to discuss is why is my ferment so unpredictable? Okay, fer fermenting vegetables can take anything from three days to three months. It all depends on what you like, how strong you want your flavor, how tangy you want it, how you like it, it's personal preference. But here's a couple of factors that influences the whole fermentation process and how long it takes. Okay, size does matter. The size of your jar and also the size of the vegetable chunks. So if you grate it very, very finely, it will ferment quicker. But if you take a whole cabbage head and ferment that, it will take much longer to get the same results as what you would get when shredding it in fine pieces. So it does matter. That will depend whether your ferment would be ready quicker, sooner or take longer to reach the final or the best end result that you like. Starters. If you use a starter like whey, kefir grains or powdered cultures, it speeds up the fermentation process and it happens faster. So that is why one ferment will take longer to mature than another. A starter makes a difference. Temperatures plays a vital role. Um, the warmer temperatures speeds up the fermentation process and cooler temperatures will slow it down. If you are fermenting in an uncontrolled environment, like in room temperature, your ferment would be ready much sooner in the summertime versus wintertime ferments. Salt. Your salt ratio also plays a major role because the more salt you use, the slower your ferment will go. You'll know when your ferment is ready when it has a tart and tangy taste to it. Now this part is the gift of home fermentation. When you're fermenting your vegetables at home, you can actually taste it after three or five days time and you can taste how the tanginess is developing and when you feel that okay right it's tangy enough you can just place your ferment in the fridge and then also it will continue to ferment so the longer it stays in the fridge the more tangy it will get then you can actually appreciate the whole process more and if you like it more tangier you can leave it a longer period on your counter so that's the gift of home fermentation and that's why I love it so much. Seems like we reached the end of our lacto fermentation troubleshooting guide. I trust that you found a bit of answers but if you are still uncertain or unclear about anything you can always come to the Facebook group and ask your questions there. It would be appreciated and then we can have a discussion about it. And I hope you have a lovely day. Enjoy.